Uh, by the way, are you, in, are you in Chicago? I am. Under snow. Under yes. snow. Well, because she's working on Chicago Med. I know. I am. I am doing Chicago Med, and and my character's a little. She's she's not the nicest person in the world, but we're trying to figure that out. <laughs> Um, you were singing Shadowland, and I just think it's only appropriate when you have Nala on the phone to ask about Lion King. And, I mean, the 20th anniversary was last year. Well, now, a year and a half ago, almost. What yeah. was it like to go back? I know you brought, you brought um, your, your child along with you to see this Disney show that you had brought to life. What was that experience? You know, it was really incredibly emotional for me, you know. Um, when I was pregnant with our son, the first one, I had decided that I would not see the show until he was ready to see it. So we didn't see the show for seven or eight years, you know. And then when I got to the theater that night, everybody went, my mother-in-law went, everybody came with me, because I think everybody wanted to see our reaction and so I was I sang along my son was crying because you know Simba and Nala were having fights but I was crying because I was watching him and you know because I, I wanted to see it through his eyes and so in essence to to kind of bring this cub for want of a better word back to the show and introduce him to it on Broadway was just one of the greater um, honors of my life like, seriously when I was doing the show I knew he had the biggest, a, a huge hit and something impactful, but I never thought in, in, in 20 years you'll bring your child to see it, you know what I mean? But can I, can I just say this though, my son is kind of like, like I sit him down and I'm like, darling, you know that character right there? That was mommy. And he's like, mm -hmm, yeah, whatever. <laughs> So much. What was that like? Tell us one of your favorite memories from Aida. Yeah. Oh no. I know, I actually, I actually wouldn't know about this. I keep walking. 
walks in with no sleeves, you know what I mean, and his little beard, and he's kind of like, oh, hey, I'm here. And you're like, yes, you are. <laughs> and so just, um, you know, like even with me, I thought Adam's voice, as Anthony well knows, is a raspy, this, uh, Anthony might actually understand this better than anybody, you know, Adam's voice is a rock, rasp, strong, uh, and I always thought, I don't know how my voice is going to connect with this voice, oh. you know what I mean? And then, it's in the so... end, it has been the best marriage yeah. ever. He's one of my favorite people to sing with. So, um, we just had a great time. We really had a good time. So, you know, lots of crying, but that's what makes putting up a show. Yeah, yes. um, Heather, hi. I'm, this is Anthony. I'm here, too. And I wanted to say, um, I got to see Color Purple, and the, the, one of the great joys of... One of the most thrilling moments of my life was, was watching you and Cynthia sing together at the end of Act One. But there's, it's so incredibly rare and special to have two women sing a song like that together. And sing it, and, and, and it, I really felt like if, if, if there were an artist, they would be drawing these, these, this connective energy that just was passing from you to her. And I, you know, I wonder what that experience was like for you, because it, it, it it, I felt like I was changed by it. Oh, you're thank sweet. You. Thank you. Thanks for that. You know, when I got in there, there was a. They had told me to, we're not over singing this song because you know it's very. Jennifer uh, Hudson was there before me, and, um, and Jennifer Hudson is, is quite the singer. Do you know what yeah. I mean? That's what this child is known for. She can sing. And needless to say, Cynthia, uh, hello. I mean, she can sing. And so I always felt like what they had done with that song was like a Coke bottle, it's, which is what my, my acting teacher always used to say. It's like they gave you a Coke bottle, they shook it, and then said, don't take the cover off. You know what I mean? But we need all that energy that's in the bottle for the audience to know. And so we, we, you're never going to oversing, you're never going to belt, you're never going to go crazy, but just you're in the Coke bottle just shaking up. And so it was, um, it really was a great time. And thank you guys for that as well. Color Purple was uh, just this added blessing that I, I didn't know I was going to have. Thank you. I had the great accidental luck of being at your last Aida show on Broadway. Um, and speaking of a Coke bottle, it was incredibly wonderful, inc incredibly controlled, but there was also such explosive, I will never forget it as long as I live. I really did, this is an analogy we use a lot when we talk about these things, but I really did feel like the roof was going to blow off the theater. In moments like that, do you, do you just, do you make a conscious decision to let it all go? Or is it, or is it, or is it just that you're going with whatever you're feeling? I, I think it's all of the above because you don't want to overdo it because it's still, even though it's your last performance, it's the first performance for somebody. There are people there who have never seen the show. So you don't want to overdo it and oversing it and, and go home and have regrets. But I do love that energy because I think, I think that energy doesn't only come from the stage, it comes from the audience. Like for me, I don't believe in the fourth wall. I never have. You know, I love looking into the audience and kind of including them. Now, I don't want you singing back. <laughs> I, don't want you to, I don't want you giving me lines, which people have done before, but I think it's part of that fourth wall. And so I'm not going to take all credit. I'm not going to take all credit for um, the roof being exploded on that night. I think a lot of that was just the energy from the audience as well. You know what I mean? We do. Absolutely. But I had to keep myself together. You know, for weeks before, I was actually thinking about taking medication that night because I was so scared to leave. And that's how I love to leave shows. I don't want to leave the show when it's like, oh, I'm so ready to get out of here. I just think that's a disservice to the show and to the history and to what the show's done for me. You know what I mean? So I left the show, I think, long before I was ready. So I was bawling weeks before. I was like, I don't want to go. You know, that kind of thing. So, um, but we, that was a good night. My mother also yelled at me, I don't know if you remember, from the audience that night. I mean, she talked back to me that night, which I don't better forget, so it's fine. <laughs> well, Heather, thank you so very much.
You're incredible. Thank you. I think I always look to these opportunities to be able to talk back to you all because um, we don't get that chance. Grace God, of course, on stage to talk to you. But let me just say to all of you seated there, and if you want to tell your friends, we are so appreciative. I am appreciative for all your support, your love, your encouragement, for all the times that you guys trek to the theater. Not just to the theater, but trek to New York to see us. It, it means the world to us that you would come to see something that I, I, I I'll let you in on a secret, that I kind of do in my bathroom every day. You know what I mean? Like I kind of screw it over there, I sing through the house. But the fact that you guys would do it and think that we um, are worth it. You know what I mean? I don't see this as you coming to see us, but a way for us to serve you musically and artistically. So for me, I just want to say thank you to all of you, all a thousand of you, the tens and hundreds of thousands that have come to see this show. Okay, we're gonna have to go, but thank you so much. Thank you, so, Heather. Thank you, Heather. Heather Headley. Wow. That was... so, on our next, we have a we have a double header on this next one. So I'm gonna make this video full screen, and I think we're gonna put the video up. Yeah, I, I let's know put that the video up. There's, even though I don't see anyone, Ready? maybe someone will show up. Let's just oh, put the video up. The well, okay. There's a hint, maybe. I think three. Three. Hello, are you there? Two, hello. One. Hello, hello. Oh. 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 How's it going back there? I'm Sarah Morellet. <laughs> John Michelson. <Yes. laughs> <laughs> we know we have a show in, 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 at 8 o'clock, so thank you for making the time for us. We really appreciate this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what time is your performance? 8 o'clock. Is that Anthony? Hi! Hi, Hi guys. Hello. 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 Hi. Um, yeah, we have an 8 o'clock today. 8 o'clock tonight. We so wish we could be there in person. This is one of the most amazing events of all time. We're just like sending so much love and, and to all the, the Broadway fans and and uh, participants out there. Lots of love to you guys. Honestly, Sarah, you gave BroadwayCon one of its most special early, early moments by <laughs> trusting us enough to come and perform at our very first event and perform uh, She Used to Be Mine. It's still among our top moments ever, now even in our fourth year. So thank you for that. And the show is beautiful. And we're so glad thank to see you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you How has it been for you be performing eight shows a week? Um, had you done theater before you actually got into your show? Like, you know, relative to doing concerts or anything like that? And what, what is your impression of doing uh, the eight shows a week I thing? did some community theater growing up. Um, nothing remotely like the schedule that Broadway demands of you. So it's, uh, I have an incredible amount of respect for all of the performers out there. This is the hardest job in the world by far. Even um, worse I, than gynecology. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. I have to ask you guys, I saw the video of you guys performing in London before it was announced that you guys went into the show. <coughs> and when you guys saying you matter to me, I was like, they are the best friends in the whole world. And now you guys get to do it together on stage. Like, how, I mean, what is it like to be with your, your <laughs> You troublemaker, Gavin. What, 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 sorry. Oh, I was what, just, I was just calling you a troublemaker. She was saying that you oh, guys yeah. don't seem to like each other very much. Yeah, it's hard. We have, we have a, yeah, special. It's something I don't, find, I, I, mean, I don't find very often. And when you do, you kind of want to hold on to it. So, I'm grateful that we have this time. I mean, she, she called and asked, and I was like, this is a dream. It's a total dream. How did you guys first meet? What is the, what was the connection? 
Yeah, Hair was my very first Broadway show I had ever seen, directed by Diane Paulus, who also directed Lakers, and uh, Gavin was in the cast of Hair, and I fangirled and didn't get to meet him in person. And then we did um, an event for True Colors, uh, Tindy Offers Fund, and Broadway Impact. We're fighting for marriage equality, which we won, mofos. Yeah. Yes! And then we became friends over the following years, and um, it's just something that's lasted. And as we're going into our third year of Waitress on Broadway, which I can't even believe is happening, it's amazing. So Gavin was the first call, and I wanted to come back. You know, it's my third my third time in the show. I wanted to come out right this year, and Gavin was my my top pick to join. And he said yes, so we're very grateful. Mm -hmm. So, have you been bitten by the bug enough that you're going to continue to try to find ways to work in the theater world again, Sarah? In, in, in I way? think so. I mean, I, I'm hoping that I, I can stay as long as you'll have me. Yeah. Yeah. Will you guys have her? Book it. Broadway Con 2020. <laughs> Thank you guys so Thank much you. for the great, have a great show. show. Thank you. So we're going to make uh, a quick phone call. This person's been in rehearsal, but is, is going to chat with us from the train. And give me a heads up, you might hear train announcements. <laughs> but they love us so much, they said, I'll go to the quiet part of the train. You're definitely going to know this, I feel can you, like. They're in the can quiet part, they're going to get in trouble for being on the phone, though. Yes. <laughs> the conductor yeah, will come through and get, get them off the phone. Let's just do it. Okay. Let's just do it. We have, listen. I'm here. You can cut me right when we're opening the doors at Stanford, so it's a little loud. Sorry. Cut her hair immediately. Cut her hair. Cut her hair up. How'd they know? Yeah, it's very distinctive. How are oh. rehearsals going for Kiss Me Cake? We're so excited. They're actually going awesome. I'm a little sore. Well, uh, you're a little sore? If that tells you anything, I'm pretty sore. <laughs> Is Warren Carlyle working you too hard? Say it again? Is Warren working you too hard? Well, not so much Warren, but, but let's just say the fight coordinator is. That's a fight. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's based on, uh, you know, Taming of the Shrew, yeah. right? I mean, it's like, there's fights. Like, it's not, like, scandalous that there are fights, right? No, yeah. Uh, you were excited to watch Kelly take some fights. Yeah, yeah, she's good. She's going to own it. Um, Kelly, Kelly, this is Anthony. Do, do you, you, would you say, is it safe to say you haven't gotten the chance to, um, to spread your comedy chop wings as much in, on stage, right? This yeah, not since really nice working people get it. Yeah, so are you happy to get to do, to be a little funny? Is that something? Oh my gosh, I've been looking forward to it for so long. Well, we look forward to it too. The, the last two years have made me want to laugh a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. How's working with Will Chase as your Petruchio friend? It's awesome. We, you know, Will and I have worked together a lot and, and known each other for a long time, so this is really, really, we're having a blast. Kelly, uh, I'm here on the train, and I can't wait to see like people tweeting like, "Is Kelly O'Hara on my train?" <laughs> Talking to a thousand Broadway fans. <laughs> but, but I know you had a long day of rehearsal. We're so thankful you called us from what Metro North. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a great advertisement for Metro North. There it is. All your dreams come true. Awesome. Well, Kelly, thank you so much. We're all really excited thank to you. see you back on Broadway. Thanks, Kelly. Bye. Bye, Kelly. Bye. That is it for this year's Thank party line. Guys. But stick around. We're going to start as soon as possible to celebrate 20 years of your good man, Charlie Brown. What show are you talking about? So stick around. We'll see you What do you mean? What are you referring to? Should I, am I supposed to leave the stage and come back out? Okay. <laughs>